How many have you forgiven today? Chapter 1, Part 3. So, has the stuff been over at the castle? Anon asks. The usual. She answers. So boring. Celestia chuckled. Uh, yes. Maybe we can do something together? Anon asks. What do you mean? Anon rubs his chin some. Well, Bon Bon Lyra and I were gonna celebrate in private over our recent success. I'm sure they wouldn't mind the extra company. You wanna join us? Celestia was kinda hoping that Anon was offering to spend some time with her alone, but she can understand why he wants to do something like this. It is indeed a great reason to celebrate, and she would like nothing more than to be there for him. I would enjoy that. She answers. Maybe we can invite Luna and Blue Blood as well. Anon throws out. I don't see why not. Celestia adds. How about Twilight? Celestia can see it happen in a split second. Anon's entire mood shifts from happy to emotionless. Anon feels his mind drifting back to the time when Twilight held him in that place of hers. He thanks whatever gods there may be that he hasn't run into Twilight during his limited time around the castle. However, now that he'll be getting free time soon, the chance of running into her will be a matter of when and not if. It's a celebration for friends. Anon answers. Celestia feels a sigh leave her. She's been working with Twilight the entire time Anon's been busy. She can see how much Twilight regrets what she's done, how much she wants to apologize to Anon. Celestia will admit that the first few weeks she was very hard on Twilight. However, her new student never complained and took what she gave her. No matter how hard the task was, she just kept pushing through it. It got to the point where Celestia was reminded of a time when Twilight thought that she was tardy with her friendship report. When Celestia sat her down and really talked to her, she found out how much Twilight felt that her punishment was not only justified, but also rather lenient. She spoke of how much more punishment she deserved for what she did to Anon, and it was from that day on that Celestia had taken her time to teach Twilight about pony society. Celestia still blames herself for having not taught her such things from the beginning, she saw all the signs. But, she hoped that going to Ponyville would have brought her out of her shell. Yet, that wasn't the case, and that's why she's here. Twilight has come a long way, but she still has a long road ahead of her. She'll be lucky if she's allowed to live in Ponyville by the end of the year, but still, Celestia can see that her student is truly sorry and trying her hardest to make up for her mistakes. That doesn't mean that she can force Anon to accept her, she knows that. She just wishes that he would at least try. Celestia may be upset with Twilight, but she can't deny the years that they've also spent together. She would be lying if she didn't admit to feeling horrible weeks after she punished Twilight. I guess you're right. Celestia admits as she takes another sip of her tea. Anon knows what Celestia is trying to do. Luna and him have spoken a lot about what's been happening around the castle during his absence. He doesn't agree that Twilight has learned her lesson. What she did can never be forgiven. Luna agrees with him, but even he can sense that she wishes for him to at least humor the thought, mostly because of her past and being Nightmare Moon. Yet, he doesn't see the both of them in the same light. Anon told her how it was. Luna and Nightmare Moon were two different ponies. There was no Nightmare Twilight, it was just Twilight doing all of those things. That's all the information that he needs to keep his distance. Anon shakes those thoughts away. He has company. No reason to waste it on that pony any longer. So, yeah, I should be getting a lot of free time soon. He says, trying to bring back the conversation. Is there anything else noteworthy? Celestia asks, and Anon rubs his chin in thought. None that I can think of. I've met a bunch of interesting customers since the shop's opened, if you can call that noteworthy. He admits. Really? Anon nods. There's one mare that comes to mind. I think she's a performer of some kind. She's kind of weird. Always talks in the third person. Fancy Pants also stops by on more than a few occasions to buy some candy for his wife. I guess she's a fan of them. He seems pretty cool. Doesn't act like most of the elite class from Canterlot. It sounds like you found good company. Celestia admits, and Anon shrugs. They tend to stay around the shop longer to talk. I don't mind much. I can name a few more, but those two are regulars. So you could say that you've made some more friends? I... Uh, maybe? He rubs his chin in thought. You think I should invite them to the celebration? Celestia shrugs. It's not her place to say if he should or shouldn't invite any pony to his party. Anon starts thinking about all the ponies that he would want there. A light bulb goes off in his mind. There's definitely one pony that he has to invite. Probably should send a letter to Pinky. He shakes his head. That would take too long. Uh, one second. Celestia watches with a raised brow as Anon raises his hand and snaps his fingers. Her eyes widen as he falls asleep. Celestia quickly catches him with her magic so he wouldn't fall onto the table. Anon! She shouts, worried. She gets up and walks closer to him. She scans him briefly and finds that nothing is wrong with him. He's just asleep. What is going on? Celestia jumps back in some surprise as Anon opens his eyes. 
Are you alright? She asks him. Yep, she'll be on the next train here, he says. Celestia is confused, as she takes her seat again across from Anon. What just happened? Celestia asks. Anon looks at her, confused. Hmm? Oh, oh, I sent a message to Pinky. Luna's been teaching me how to dreamwalk, and that's a thing I learned. Celestia's eyes widen at that. Is her sister actually teaching another creature about dreamwalking? This is definitely news to her. I must admit that I'm rather surprised. My sister's been known never to teach another being how to dreamwalk. Anon shrugs. We have a lot of free time while we're asleep. I'm not as good as her, but I'm learning as time goes on. I can send messages pretty easily, which is a surprise, because you'd think it would be harder, but she said I picked it up rather quickly. So you sent a message in a dream? How does that work? Celestia asks, interested. Anon takes a second to think. It's hard to explain. Uh, basically, I'm going into Pinky's head and telling her subconscious about the party. Everyone's subconscious is always in a dreamlike state, so... Her subconscious will bring this thought to Pinky and she can answer back. Pinky knows what to look for, but if I did this to you or another pony, they would probably get confused. It would seem like your own thought, but a whisper of my own as well. Very jarring for anyone that wasn't expecting it. Can you try it with me? Celestia asks, and she notices an onlook warily at her. No, it's a lot more than what I told you. The subconscious of a pony's mind can be dangerous. How so? Celestia leans a bit forward. You can't control your subconscious. Anon answers. Everything is laid bare. If I wanted, I could see things that Pinky never wanted me to see. It's very hard, but I have to concentrate on the message and never allow my mind to wander. If I did that for a split second, I would be flooded with thoughts and memories. That sounds dangerous. Celestia says in worry. It's very dangerous. As it turns out, your sister and I have a lot more in common than I once thought. Celestia feels her brow raise. Why do you say that? Luna said it's best to experience the pain so that the mind will never wonder. She let me into her subconscious to send a message and then told me to think of something else. That fraction of a second was all it took. I lived a small portion of her life. Surely it's largely a jumbled mess, but I got the gist of it. She... she allowed this? Celestia asks in disbelief. Anon nods. She did. Of course she hid away some things. Luna's mind is very sharp. She just let me experience the good times in her life and not the times of war or her nightmare moon thing. Don't get me wrong, the flood of memories was painful, to say the least. It's also hard to separate what are your memories and thoughts and what is another memories and thoughts. Thankfully, Luna was there to shield my mind so I could cope better. I... I don't know what to say. Luna hasn't told her about what she and Anana have been doing. It's fine, Luna was right as well. Since then, I haven't allowed my mind to wander when I'm in another pony's head, well, at least in their subconscious. Uh, dreamwalking can get confusing. She thinks I can become a dreamwalker of her caliber one day. I doubt that. But we have fun. Celestia may have to talk to her sister some about this, but for now, she can table it. It's good to know that you're getting along well with Luna. Celestia admits, and Anna chuckles. How's she been handling the throne? She doesn't talk much about the stuff, mostly dreamwalking business. Celestia smiles at that. It reminds me of the old days. I'm looking into getting her throne to sit beside mine. Well, that's great. I'm happy to hear that she's doing so well. I know you both were pretty nervous when she started. Celestia nods. I was, but it's good to know that my fears were unfounded. Their attention is taken from them as Lyra walks into the kitchen. Um, Anon? She asks nervously. Hmm? Anon turns to face Lyra. She looks between the princess and Anon, unsure if she should be interrupting them, but soon faces Anon to tell him why she's here. I just wanted to tell you that Trixie's here. She says. Anon smirks at that. Can you show her here? She nods, and slowly walks out. Celestia finds her mind going back to this mare. How is Anon acting so normal around her? Again, that strong feeling is starting to well up inside of her at the thought of that mare. As she tries to seduce Anon. That thought alone makes her feathers ruffle, nostrils flare, and first stand on end. She's quick to control it, but it's not easy. So, you're probably wondering why I'm so nice to Lyra. Celestia looks over to see Anon staring her dead in the eyes. He's still smiling at her, but she can see a certain harsh gaze that he's giving her, as if he can sense her desire to put that mare into her dungeon. It's a thought. No reason to lie. We had a long talk with each other. I understand how she feels, and I can't blame her for that. As long as she keeps herself in check, then I'm alright with whatever thoughts that she wants to have. Do you not worry that she will break her promise? Celestia presses a bit harder than she intends. Bon Bon's been keeping her in check lately. I trust her enough to wrangle Lyra in when she needs to. Celestia lets out a sigh. If things are working for Anon, then she has no right to try and tell him what to do. 
The doors that led to the kitchen come flying open, an azure-colored mare is standing there looking rather smug. Sitting atop her head is a large mage's hat and an equally large cloak laying upon her back. The two pieces of clothing are covered in various star patterns. Look upon me in awe, human, as the great and power! The mare comes to a halt as she looks at the princess like a deer in the headlights. Celestia, this is Trixie. Trixie, my friend Celestia. Anon introduces them. Anon watches with a smug look of his own as Trixie tries to say something, but little more than her breath leaves her mouth. Celestia can see this as well, so she decides to break the ice and takes initiative. It's nice to meet you. Celestia extends her hoof. Trixie shakily raises her hoof and rests it onto the princesses. Celestia gives it a few shakes and moves her hoof back. The mare still looks rather shaken, but overall a lot calmer than a few moments ago. So, what brings you here, Trix? Anon asks. Trixie looks over at Anon, back to the princess, then back to Anon. Tr Trixie wishes to know what you were up to. Anon shrugs. Same old, same old. We're almost done teaching the new employees. Trixie looks at him brightly. Does that mean that you will be getting free time? Anon nods. Yep. Speaking of free time, you want to join my friends and I for a party we're throwing this occasion? Trixie clears her throat some as she tries to remain composed. Well, it wouldn't be much of a party if Trixie wasn't there. She says, full of confidence. Anon chuckles at that. Well, can he let Trixie know that she's invited if she's interested? What time would this party be? She asks. Anon shrugs. Probably Saturday, around five. Where will it be? The castle. Anon adds. Nothing fancy, just friends hanging out. Trixie will patiently wait. She says with a smile. May Trixie ask if you have her order? Celestia looks over to see Anon realize something. Oh, uh, yes, one sec. Anon walks over to one of the cupboards and reaches in. He pulls out a small bag, then walks over to Trixie and hands it to her. She takes the bag with her magic. Trixie thanks you for taking the time to make her order. That's no problem. See you Saturday. Trixie gives Anon a wave and a small bow to the princess just before she leaves. Anon returns to his seat and faces Celestia. Custom order? She asks, and Anon nods. Yeah, some ponies can't process pure sugar that well, so we make custom candy that uses alternatives. It's pretty popular, and we don't charge extra. Celestia can't help but swell in her heart. It's so hard to believe that this is Anon. Well, she's already known this Anon, but to see him acting like this with other ponies makes her feel as if the world is perfect. She's always thought about a day like this, but to actually experience it is still a bit shocking. It almost makes up for all the hardships from the past, and she can only hope that this trend continues. It's good to hear how well you're doing. Celestia takes another sip of her tea. We've been working very hard. In a few days, we'll finally be able to get some downtime. So what plans do you have once your time is made free? Celestia asks. Anon takes a second to think about that. Celestia is right. He never really thought much about what he'll do once he's free from his work. His life was simple. Get up, go to work, then sleep. So what will he do now once his job is no longer a choice? It seems so odd to think about it in such a way. He's always thought his job would be a constant. I do not know. He answers. I guess I'll see what happens. Would you like to spend time together? Celestia offers. <laughs> well, that should go without saying. That gets Celestia smiling. Anon looks over at the clock hanging on the wall. Damn, I gotta head back to the kitchen. He gets up from his chair. Sorry for such a short visit, but I need to keep a close eye on those cooks. One slip of the hoof and we can lose an entire batch of candy. Celestia shakes her head. No need to explain. I understand that you still have a few days before you can trust your employees. Anon rubs the back of his neck. It's so weird to think of them as my employees. He looks at Celestia and waves for her to follow. I'll show you out. Celestia nods at him as she follows. Then both of them walk out of the back kitchen and into the main store. Anon stops at the register to talk to Lyra as Celestia walks past him and towards the door. Anon then catches up with Celestia and opens the door for her. For some reason, Celestia feels her cheeks redden as she walks out. Oh, one last thing. Anon calls out. Celestia turns and sees Anon is holding two bags in his hands. One has her cutie mark on it and the other has what appears to be Bluebloods mark. For you and Luna to share. He hands her the one with her mark. It's something I've been working on. Tell me what you think when I come back tonight. He then hands her the other. And something special for Blue. Celestia gives a nod and takes the bags into her magic. Will we see you at dinner? She asks, and Anon nods. Definitely. See you around, see ya. Anon walks up to her and wraps his arms around her neck. She'll never grow tired of this. She nuzzles his neck some before he pulls away. See you later, Anon. Celestia says. Anon turns around and walks back inside. Celestia takes a moment to compose herself. She isn't too sure why, but her heart was beating faster than normal when Anon was hugging her. Even her cheeks feel a bit warm. She hopes she isn't getting sick. No need to worry. She'd better head back to the castle to see how her sister is doing.
A part of me is thinking that Twilight's gonna sneak her way into the party, but maybe not. But it's nice to see that the business is doing pretty well. Anyway, let's get on to our very sweet donators. Top donators, TacoCat598, Peter Coldhard, J Tinman, Darkside, Only One Thing, and Twinkie. Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rowland, Crazy Killer 557, Stu Hex, Sword Brother and Mordred, Omicron Lyrae, Will, Chris, Dospo, Delta Omega, Jack Hedge, Runes Life 5852, Madman Stan, Leslie Prickett, Drake Love Dragon, Hunter Norman, Stephen Bingham, Line Got 12, Sorcerer Constantine, Azaza, Convair, and many more amazing people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.